The milk hauler is a vital part of our nation's milk marketing system. You are a link between the dairy producer and milk handlers. You have responsibilities regarding a wide variety of issues, from the safe operation of a large truck to the performance of the official duties of a licensed and permitted sampler weigher. You are a highly visible representative of the dairy industry as you perform your daily activities. You have more contact with the dairy producers than any other individual working the dairy industry. Your job is important because your work directly impacts the dairy producer's livelihood and helps to protect public health. You are responsible for determining if the milk is acceptable for pickup and you are also responsible for sampling and weighing the milk which has a direct impact on producer payment, processor expenditures and hauling expenses. These same activities are also a vital component in determining the safety and quality of one of our nation's most important food groups. First let's discuss the licensing and permitting requirements for Kentucky Bulk Milk Hauler. All individuals who sample and weigh milk or who physically handle milk samples that will be used for payment purposes are required to be licensed by the University of Kentucky Division of Regulatory Services. Milk haulers are also required to obtain a permit issued by the Kentucky Milk Safety Branch. The hauler's truck or tanker is also required to be permitted by the Milk Safety Branch. All individuals, including part-time haulers, are required to possess these documents. The hauler should always have his license and applicable permits with him while performing milk hauling activities. Before hauling a single load of milk, a newly employed hauler is required to obtain a temporary license and a temporary permit. Applications for these documents can be obtained by directly contacting the appropriate agency or by contacting your local milk inspector. These temporary documents provide you with the opportunity as a new hauler to receive on-the-job training under the supervision of a licensed person. When a temporary license and permit are issued, you'll be provided information that outlines Kentucky milk hauling requirements. After becoming familiar with these requirements, you are ready for on-the-job training. When your supervisor determines that you are familiar and proficient with your responsibilities, you can then perform official sampling and weighing duties on your own. During your training period, you will need to become thoroughly familiar with all your responsibilities and with how your work impacts producers, processors, and the safety of our food supply. You will also need to have your own milk sampling procedures evaluated by your local milk safety branch inspector. This process is known as certification. All of this work will prepare you to pass a written exam. After successfully completing the written exam, you will be issued your full license and permit. Your license from UK Regulatory Services is issued annually and expires each year on June 30. Your milk safety branch permit remains valid provided you maintain compliance. After receiving your license and permit, you'll be evaluated periodically for compliance by both agencies. Maintaining compliance is extremely important. Failure to maintain compliance can put your status as a licensed and permitted milk sampler weigher in jeopardy. Now let's discuss proper milk hauling procedures. Since you are a highly visible representative of the dairy industry, you should maintain a clean and neat appearance and always use good personal hygiene while performing your work. Dress appropriately for your work conditions and keep safety in mind. It is a good idea to wear slip-resistant shoes that can withstand water damage and frequent contact with cleaning and sanitizing liquids. At the beginning of the day, make sure that your truck is properly cleaned, sanitized, and in good repair, and that you have all the necessary equipment and supplies to perform your tasks. Your truck is required to be prominently identified. The name and address of the hauling company should be clearly displayed on both sides of the truck or rear of the truck and the tank ID should be displayed on the rear of the tank. The outer appearance of the truck should remain clean at all times. The truck should have a valid inspection sticker in the pump compartment and a wash tag appropriately secured near the pump area. The corresponding truck inspection sheet should also be kept with the truck. Locks and seals are also important in today's modern dairy industry. Be sure your truck is always properly secured and meets the requirements of the organizations for which you are hauling. The cleanliness of your truck cannot be overemphasized. A clean truck is a prominent symbol of the dairy industry and helps to convey a positive image to the public. 
Even though plants and milk receiving stations use clean-in-place equipment and may assist you in cleaning your truck, it is your responsibility as a licensed and permitted hauler to maintain a clean and sanitary vehicle. Now, let's review the equipment you will need to perform your responsibilities. You will need a properly insulated sample case with ice and water, a floater or a rack, an ample supply of sample containers properly stored in a secured area of the truck, a waterproof pen, a sample dipper, sanitizer fluid, sanitizer test strips, a sanitizer spray bottle, single service towels, a calibrated thermometer, an adequate supply of load tickets, and an ink pen with which to transcribe your records, and a watch to properly time farm tank agitation. A conscientious hauler will thoroughly examine his truck, equipment, and supplies at the beginning of each day. Now, let's review proper milk pickup procedures. The situations demonstrated in this video represent one type of routine for making a proper milk pickup. You may develop your own routine, but it is important to utilize each necessary step every time you make a farm pickup. When approaching the milk house, always keep an eye out for children and animals. Position your truck in front of the milk house in an appropriate manner to enable you to easily make the milk pickup. When making the farm pickup, be sure to limit your travel only to areas necessary to do your job. Walk directly from your truck to the milk house. Turn on the light and wash your hands. Never use tobacco or take any food inside the milk house. Now you can determine if the milk is acceptable for pickup. You will evaluate the milk for its smell, appearance, and temperature. The decision to accept or reject milk is one of the most difficult decisions you will make as a milk hauler. The friendly relationship you develop with the producers on your route can sometimes make it difficult to reject the milk in question. Nevertheless, as a milk hauler, it is likely that you will eventually encounter a tank of milk that must be rejected. Not rejecting a questionable farm tank of milk can ruin an entire tanker load and potentially compromise the quality of dairy products. Evaluate Milk Odor the ideal method for being able to make an evaluation of the milk's odor is to carefully open the tank lid and immediately smell the milk while it is agitating. Normal milk has no odor or smells sweet. Abnormal milk odors include feed odors caused by certain types of feed or feed ingredients, garlic or onion odors typically caused by pasture weeds in the springtime, malty, rancid, or sour odors, which can be caused by high levels of bacteria as a result of poor refrigeration, unclean milking systems, or excessive agitation. You may also encounter other types of foreign odors. These odors are occasionally derived from cleaning solutions or sanitizers and may smell like bleach. Evaluate milk appearance. Visually inspect the milk for abnormalities with the milk house light on. Normal milk ranges from bluish white to golden yellow in color. Appearance defects can include bloody milk. This condition can be caused by milking newly freshened cows or cows with severe mastitis infections. Even a small amount of bloody milk can give milk in a farm tank a reddish tinge. Flaky milk. Flakes or curd particles may occur in milk as a result of mastitis or souring. Flakiness is often accompanied by a disagreeable odor. Partially churned milk. Fat globules floating in the milk or sticking to the side of the bulk tank can be caused by excessively agitating milk at warm temperatures. These globules can range in size from about the size of a pinhead to larger chunks about the size of a pea. Frozen milk. The presence of ice in the milk is an indication that the farm bulk tank is not operating properly. Ice particles are occasionally seen floating on the milk's surface. Large ice chunks may be observed after the tank is emptied. Excessive foaming. Foam can be caused by the tank agitator running too fast, when the drop pipe leading into the tank is too short, or when there is an air leak in the milking system. Tanks with continual amounts of excessive foam should be promptly addressed. Foamy tanks are difficult to accurately sample and measure, and the producer's milk quality test can be detrimentally impacted by excessive foam. 
Extraneous matter. Floating extraneous matter such as insects, chaff, or straw is a cause for rejection of milk. The presence of extraneous matter may be the result of careless handling of the milk, such as leaving the tank lid open, leaving the door of the milk house open, or improper filtering of the milk. Now check the temperature of the milk. Legally acceptable bulk milk is held within a temperature range of 32 degrees to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the optimum holding temperature for milk is between 34 degrees and 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Many processors have much more demanding temperature requirements for milk they receive. Be sure to be aware of the temperature requirements for the plants to which you deliver. Make sure that each tank's thermometer is accurate by comparing it to a temperature reading obtained with your calibrated thermometer. Record this comparison on the producer's barn chart at least once per month. Your calibrated thermometer must be checked for accuracy at least once every six months. Whenever you use your thermometer, be sure to sanitize it prior to placing it in the milk. You, as the licensed and permitted sampler weigher, are responsible for conducting the initial evaluation of producer milk for acceptance. If for any reason you determine a producer's milk is unacceptable, do not pick up the milk. Notify the producer, contact the handler's field representative, and take a sample. Measuring the milk. Turn off the agitator in order to prepare for measuring the milk. To obtain a measurement, the milk must be absolutely motionless. Tanks are typically measured with either a stick gauge or a tube gauge. When using a stick gauge, wipe the stick clean with a single service towel. Gently lower the stick into the milk until it is firmly seated in its base. Raise the stick and obtain the reading at eye level. Perform this procedure until two identical readings are obtained. For tanks with a tube gauge, be sure the tube is clean. Slowly open the valve to minimize foam and obtain the measurement by reading the bottom of the meniscus with the slide gauge vernier. Convert the measurement to a weight using the bulk tank conversion chart and immediately record your measurement and weight on the milk ticket and barn chart. Sampling the milk. The dairy industry utilizes the Universal Milk Sampling System. This means the samples you obtain can be used for a wide variety of testing purposes. Each sample you take is an official sample. It is extremely important that each and every sample you obtain be a representative sample from an homogeneous tank of milk. The only way to ensure an accurate representative sample is to properly agitate each tank of milk. Be sure to allow for the proper amount of agitation time for each producer tank on your route. Always use your watch to make sure each tank is adequately agitated. Tanks smaller than a thousand gallons must be agitated a minimum of five minutes. Tanks 1,000 gallons or larger must be agitated a minimum of 10 minutes. Proper agitation is important. Insufficiently agitated tanks can result in poor samples. Poor samples will not be accurate for butterfat testing or other tests of milk quality. Poor samples can detrimentally affect your sampler wear evaluations and can detrimentally affect the producer. While you are waiting for the proper agitation time, you can be preparing to take the sample and complete the pickup. Before taking the sample, properly identify the sample container. Each sample should be identified with the producer's number and tank ID if producer has more than one tank, date and time, including AM, PM, or by using military time, milk temperature, and your initials. The milk handler may require other information to be recorded on a sample container. Whenever using barcode labels to identify the producer's number, be sure to not distort the computer barcode. Record all information on the container using your waterproof pen. Now you're ready to take the sample. Remember, the containers you use when sampling milk are sterile. Handle them appropriately at all times. Never touch the inside of the container. Rinse your sanitized dipper with milk at least twice. With the agitator running, place the dipper into the milk at least six to eight inches. Avoid any foamy areas of the milk. Transfer the milk from your dipper into the container away from the bulk tank's opening. Fill the container approximately three quarters full. Securely close the container and immediately place the sample in your cooler's ice and water mixture 
properly secured with a sample floater or rack. Rinse your dipper with water and place it back into the sanitizer solution in the dipper well. Remember, never sample milk from the tank outlet valve. At the first farm pickup of each day, a second sample must be taken in the same manner as the official sample. The sample will serve as a temperature control sample and should be labeled with all the information recorded on the official sample plus the initials TC. Transferring the milk. Do not begin milk transfer until the milk has been sampled and weighed. To transfer the milk, place your truck's hose through the hose port and plug in the pump cord. Carefully examine the tank's outlet valve. If the valve appears to be leaking or if it is not capped, thoroughly clean and sanitize it before hooking it up. When making the connection, be careful and ensure the hose cap is not contaminated. To prevent damage to the tank, make sure it is properly vented. With the agitator still running, open the tank valve, start the pump, and begin the transfer. Be sure to observe the unloading process. Turn off the agitator when the milk level in the tank reaches the agitator blades. When the tank is empty, turn off the pump, disconnect and cap the hose, and place it in the truck, and close the hose port. Observe the inner walls of the tank. Look for signs of ice, sediment, or other defects. Make a note of any abnormalities you see. Rinse the tank and floor with warm water and close the tank's lid. Never rinse the tank with the milk hose still hooked up. Prior to leaving, be sure to complete all your records, clean up any spilled milk, place all items in their proper place, and turn out the lights. Now you're ready for your next producer pickup. When you arrive at the milk plant, be sure to have everything in order. Your paperwork should be complete, accurate, and legible, and you should have a complete sample set for your route. Personnel in the milk receiving area will examine your equipment and paperwork and obtain a sample to test for antibiotics and other tests for milk quality. After your load is cleared and approved, you can unload your milk. Take your samples out of your storage case and carefully place them in the plant storage refrigerator. While most plants assist in the cleaning and sanitizing of your truck tank, remember, maintaining clean and sanitary equipment is the milk hauler's responsibility. Every part coming into contact with milk must be thoroughly washed and sanitized. Depending on the plant, you may be able to wash some of these parts in a wash basket. Otherwise, these parts may need to be hand washed and sanitized. Observe to make sure the plant's Clean in Place, or CIP, wash system is appropriate for your truck's tank and that it is working properly. Reassemble your pumps, gaskets, and other tank parts with an FDA approved lubricant. After the washing and sanitizing process is complete, Examine the tank to make sure it is properly drained. Make sure the wash tag is completed and attached and you are ready to pick up your next load of milk. If you are a new milk hauler, we hope this information will assist you in becoming thoroughly familiar with your responsibilities and will aid you in successfully completing your written exam so that you can obtain your license and permit. If you are an experienced hauler, this information should reinforce the importance of the role you play in today's modern dairy industry. Whether you are a routine milk hauler or relief hauler, you should be thoroughly familiar with all your responsibilities. Proper performance of milk hauling procedures helps to ensure a properly functioning milk marketing and food safety system and a thriving dairy industry. Your work impacts the dairy producer's livelihood, the quality of dairy products produced for the public, and the safety of our food supply. We certainly realize you work long, hard hours, and we want to thank you for your conscientious efforts.